This is Dave Doggett, and you're listening to the Maritime Outdoorsman Podcast, Episode 12. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Maritime Outdoorsman. And today, we're going to be connecting with someone I've already had on the show before, and that's my good friend Steve Clapperton, host of Eastlink TV's Fishing with Friends. And the reason I want to connect with Steve today is because not only is Steve very knowledgeable in fishing in general, but Steve also happens to work on a tuna charter. And you know who hasn't thought how cool it would be to hook a giant bluefin tuna? And... We have tons of these things, literally tons of these things, swimming around in our waters here in the Maritimes. But we're going to connect with Steve uh, here in just a few minutes. But before we do, I want to thank the sponsors of today's show, and that is Atlantic Winds Adventure. And you can find Atlantic Winds Adventure online at AtlanticWindsAdventure.com. And they specialize in uh, catamarans, fishing kayaks, various other kinds of kayaks, paddle boards, even kites. And uh, so, by all means, check them out sometime. Um, If you go into the shop or you're talking to them on the phone, let them know how you heard about them on this show. And that's greatly appreciated. So, again, today what we're going to do is we're going to connect with my friend Steve, hear what he has to say about the tuna fishery, and uh, so let's go do that right now. All right, Steve, thanks for joining me for uh, kicking off Season 2 of the Maritime Outdoorsman Podcast. How you been? Excellent, Dave. Can't complain. You know, spring's coming, and uh, well, spring's here, and uh, things are looking up. Glad to get over that long winter, that's for sure. Yeah, that was a brutal one, for sure. Oh, oh man, unbelievable. What, you tie a lot of flies keep yourself busy, or what? Tied loads of flies, uh, shoveled loads of driveways, and uh, <laughs> things like that, so... There was loads of stuff to do, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, so you've been, lately you've been uh, even out doing some commercial fishing, but uh, later in the summer, is it, kind of, is it kind of near the end of the summer that the tuna fishery uh, starts up? Yes. Well, just now I'm just finishing up, wrapping up our lobster season here. It'll be done the 1st of July, and then, uh, come, and then in middle of July, they'll start getting ready for uh, catch and release tuna fishing, and, which starts on the 1st of August this year. Uh, and the basin, actually in the Gulf, you know, in the Gulf there, uh, mm-hmm. the Bumbling Straits will be out there too, fishing for the giant bluefin tuna, uh, a catch and release. Uh, this has been going for a few years now. It's getting busier and busier every year. We've got 20 boats out there chartering this year. Uh, and it's all, of course, catch and release, single barbless hook and all that stuff. And it's, uh, it's really taken off. It's been great. Awesome. So how... How many how many years have you guys been been chasing the the giant bluefins up there? This this will be our, our fourth year doing the catch and release, uh, and I've been uh, commercially fishing bluefin now for ten years. Uh, and I, since I've started fishing ten years ago, the number of fish that are being shown up in our area has increased unbelievable. I mean, when I first started, we go you go a week sometimes without even marking a fish like hey, and uh, really. And nowadays, when you go out, you expect to see 50, 60 fish in a day, like, and hook up multiple times, like, so it's, uh, it's quite a crazy phenomenon, because there's, they're, they're going on the endangered species list, and, but yet we're seeing more fish up here than ever been seen in history, like, eh, so it's, it's quite a crazy phenomenon. How's that working? So they, they are, in fact, uh, headed to be listed, or are they listed as, uh, uh, what's their status right now? In da- endangered, I think, Dave, is okay. what they listed as just now, like, you know. So, uh, uh, actually, there was uh, the ICAT, people look after this, the fishery, the who decide where it gets put in, what category gets put in. Uh, they were saying, like, Canada, is, we're the leaders in looking after these fish up here, you know. Mm-hmm. There's... Uh, there's great strict measures on how many get caught every year, and uh, and they're really watching the catch and release fishery too. And actually, they they do take a more tar- They take some of our, of our commercial tonnage and move it across to our catch and release, and uh, they take a 3.5 percent mortality rate 
So every fish that gets landed, they take uh, 3.5 percent of the average weight, which is about 700 pounds, mm -hmm. and actually take that off a quota. So if we were to land uh, hook and release 100 fish, they would take that off that, that weight off actually a total that we can only catch. Like so, it's it's well looked after fishery, and it's it's been going really well the last three, uh, four years. Nobody's really happy with it. So awesome. So. It, it looks like it, you know you'll be okay to 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 keep fishing them for a number of years yet, at least. Yes, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. For fingers crossed for it, like hey. So, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, there's been a lot of tagging getting done the last couple of years with these charter boats too, and and these fish are showing up again. They're showing up all over the world. So, catch and release works, uh, and also, of course, these charter guys, as I said, are putting tags in fish too. So we're actually doing a bit of science as well. So it's. Uh, it helps uh, uh, the scientists figure out what's going on with the the blue the giant bluefin tuna. So it's uh, interesting. Quite a project, that's for sure. Yeah, fascinating. So yeah. these things are are no question. You know the the biggest game fish that anyone. I mean, is it is it the big biggest game fish in the world? I mean, other than like a giant great white or something like that. And I think the biggest after the, uh, above that will be one above it is which is uh, I think it's the blue marlin. Oh, blue marlin, which yeah, can get yeah. up to about uh, seventeen hundred, eighteen hundred pounds, mm -hmm, like it. So, mm -hmm. but apart from that, it's a bluefin, like it. So they're uh, awesome, uh, and then the numbers of them are just huge just now up here in Nova Scotia. People are traveling from New Zealand, South Africa, Australia to come here and fish them because there's nowhere else in the planet where you can fish them so plentiful. Actually, hand feed the fish before you hook them up, like hey, you know you can. <laughs> stand and pick out what fish you want to catch so awesome. it's uh it's it's really it's huge for the economy you know these guys are coming up there's some wealthy guys coming up here and and you know they go to a restaurant and a bar and they're throwing huge tips at waitresses and waiters and and spending money on their local economies too so it's really in Anaganish county it's really uh it's really grown and the locals really support it because they see how good it's doing for the economy so awesome awesome so as a so as somebody who might be interested in uh in coming up and doing that, um, you know, like what, what's the average day run us through, you know, the average outing, how it goes kind of from, from start to yeah. finish. Yeah. Well, uh, we usually, uh, everybody usually leaves Cape George seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, we'll jump on the boat. We'll give you the rundown of the safety equipment on the boat. Uh, before we leave shore, make sure everybody knows where life rafts and life jackets are. And, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll head out to uh, usually uh, to get bait fish first. You know, uh, we we'll, we'll fish sometimes live mackerel, so mm -hmm. we'll do some jigging for mackerel. Uh, and other times later on in the season, late mid September onwards, we're using mainly heron because the heron are in the bay by that time. So that's what the tuna are really feeding heavily on. So we usually have a couple of nets out there, and we'll go out and pick some heron out the nets, and then uh, and then we'll head to the fishing grounds and. Uh, it could be 10 miles offshore, it could be half a mile offshore, it just depends where the fish were the day before, and actually the charter group's really good, they'll, they'll spread out over the whole gulf, and then the radio will come on, people are spotting fish here, spotting fish there, and, uh, so we can, so even Cape George, we can fish right across the PEI, you can go up, to, be up in Tegnish, hmm. and like 70 hours, or you could be off the Cape Britain in an hour, or you can be off the ridge, fish in, in an hour and a half like hey so there's we're really central so we can shoot off to anywhere you really want in a day to catch fish so mm, fascinating so once you're out there and you got your bait um and, and you know and somebody and you know some fish are being spotted um how does that work so you just everybody kind of zones in on where the school is do they school yeah, oh yeah they can they can school heavily especially if you see the heron fishery is going on at the time mm -hmm. you imagine there's a hundred uh, heron boats out there and they're all pulling up nets and there's there's heron condensed in, a, in an area and when these nets are coming up the the tuna fish are free feeding off the heron that are feet falling out the back of the nets and stuff like hey so that'll really school them up or if there is just a tight ball of heron out there uh, that'll school them up too uh very rarely does a fish travel by itself like hey so if you're if you're sounding one fish there's usually a few more fish there so uh so just say in august 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 is my favorite fishery because there's actually less fish, so you're actually you're actually really fishing for the fish. Like either you're uh, you having to try different things, everything from uh, putting a live mackerel on a kite, which is mm -hmm. basically the dry fly fishing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You get, you get the mackerel right on top of the water, 
just say 50 feet off the back of the boat and it's and it's right on top of the water so you actually see the tuna fish come up and take it mm. or you can be using a, a huey rig which is uh basically either a live mackerel or dead heron uh put down you know 50 feet or with a weight and, and it swims around there or uh or you can uh have a, a dead bait and you're just dropping dropping the dead bait like it's fluttering down in the water to a certain depth then you pick her back up and repeat the process, mm-hmm. and all the time as well, most of the time we're chumming as well with either heron or mackerel, depending on what's on the go and what the, the fish are feeding on. So there's all different ways to catch mm-hmm. them, and actually we've actually had them on uh, on uh, like uh, crankbaits too. So if we've seen fish, we'll get the crankbait, toss the crankbait out and start retrieving it, and, and they'll take crankbaits too. Like really? It's, it's, uh, like, a, like a big yeah, rapala? A big rapala. Uh, we have some big rubber mackerel that we use. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also you can troll for them too. That's another way you can do. You can troll squid rigs, which is really an old-fashioned way of doing it because back then the gas was cheap, like, eh? so people yeah, used yeah. to cruise around the Gulf and yeah. just troll this uh, daisy chain of squid. And, of course, the last squid in the row has got a hook in it and the mm-hmm. tuna will come up. And it's, it's a good way to fish them too because it's, it's a sight fishery. When the fish comes up, you get to see it take the bait. like eh? so, so there's all different kinds of techniques out there eh? catch fish actually hooking fish is no problem in the gulf mm-hmm. it's uh the, the the hardest part is actually getting your fish to the side of the boat because a lot of the times you're fighting a fish over a thousand pound that does not want to come to your boat like yeah. this so it's uh there's loads of skill involved in that so uh yeah so then we'll fish we'll fish out there for the day and uh as nowadays this this year we have uh you'd like to land two fish to the side of the boat so just say you went out and you you hooked up a fish in the morning, got the side of the boat. Uh, if the boys wanted to do it, if there was a lot of fish going out, if they wanted to catch their second fish straight away and then be done for the day, well, that would be fine too. Uh, but there's also, like, there's whales going on at the time, so you can go feed whales. and Even just stand and feed tuna all day is fun as well. Like, eh? So we try and spread the day out so you get your full day. Right. Uh, and there's lunch on the boats too. Like, I usually have a, a barbecue or lobster sandwiches or whatever. And... Uh, yeah, no, it's definitely a, it's a full day, and of course you can be jigging mackerel and jigging cod and everything when you're out there too. So it's uh, nice. There's Sound, loads going on, that's for sure. Sounds good. And there's a lot talk of lobster sandwiches is making me hungry. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, as of the time of this recording, which is uh, almost summer of 2014, what's the regulation? I heard you mention you're allowed to hook two. We were allowed to we're allowed to get two fish to the side of the boat. Mm-hmm. Now you're allowed to hook up four times. So if you just happen to run four fish and lose them, then that's the end of the day too. Like eh? so, mm-hmm. and that's just that's just to help so is the mortality rate. You you know hooking too many fish in right. a day, and right. you know I mean. So as I say, it's very strictly looked at, and uh, and that's the way the fishermen want it because we've got this unique resource that could be here forever if it's looked after. So. And actually, nowadays, there's there's more money in the catch and release than there is in the commercial because mm-hmm. Japan just isn't paying for the tuna fish no more. Like, eh? right. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a, a definite good way to go. I have nothing bad to say about the commercial apart from they don't make the money they used to make. Like, okay. you know, and, uh, and I mean, that's well looked after, too. We have a certain tonnage that goes on signs, so it's uh, mm-hmm. it's all good. Okay, so yeah. there is a commercial side of it, too, uh, every every season up there? Yes, there is. Yes, okay. uh, uh, there's 112 commercial boats, well, licenses, and it gets split up. And just now, it basically, with the tonnage we get, it basically means everybody gets at least one tag, and I think there's 30 more people get second tags, and that basically brings us to our uh, our quota, our tonnage, our Canadian tonnage, like eh? so. Uh, and that can be done any time of the year. That can be any, done any time from August. Till the end of end of November, I think, is when the commercial season finishes. Like, eh? so hmm. it's uh, but a lot of these guys are commercial fishermen. have changed over, or they do both, but mm-hmm. a lot of them are doing the charters too. Like, sure, eh? so sure. it's, uh, and finding it more profitable and more fun too. Yeah, like, absolutely. You're not as stressed when you lose a fish. Right? <laughs> Wasn't it worth thirty thousand dollars? Or uh, uh, the name days are long gone. Like sure. thirty thousand dollar fish. So. Sure, sure. Yeah. So. When it, when a fish is hooked on one of these charters, is it a one man 
show or or is it just up to the angler itself do you guys rotate take turns rotating and well, how's that totally work? up to you guys totally up to you guys now the rule is you have to fight the fish within an hour so uh and my experience over the last 10 years is actually the faster you play the fish and get to the site number one is better for the fish mm-hmm. uh and number two is you actually have more chance of landing the fish because you give it less time a uh to rub your line against bolts or nets or against fins, like, you know. So uh, when I definitely want my clients to fight as hard as they can. If they fight for 15 minutes and they're tired because they've been given it all, then it's a good time to change and get the fresh peri legs and back into the chair and let them fight it until they're done. And then, you know, so, so sometimes maybe even the four people can get on the, on the chair for each fish and, and get it for enders. Obviously, some people want to go out and land their fish themselves, and, and that's all cool, too. But there, there's plenty of opportunity to share a fish, like that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah. If, if an angler is lucky enough to get a, get one of these big uh, bluefins to the side of the boat, it, is, is there enough opportunity to get a picture of it before it's Oh, yeah, released? for sure. Because uh, when we land the fish, just like, uh, just like when we're landing a trout and a salmon, we revive the fish, so... Uh, we, we'll put the, the boat in gear, and uh, me being a, a wireman on the back of the boat, I'll have a hold of the, the line right beside the fish, the tuna's mouth, and we'll have the, the boat in gear so it's pulling fresh, it's pulling fresh water mm-hmm. over the gills mm-hmm. of the tuna fish. And once we see a, a bit more fight come back to her, then we'll uh, cut the line right at the hook. Most of the hookups, because they're circle hooks, they're hooked right on the lips. Like, okay, so we'll, we can either take the hook out or we cut the line right at the at the at the hook, and this gives a lot. Of, when the boat, the fish is at the boat, the side of the boat, you, people can lean over and get their pictures taken with this fish. Like, I mean, awesome. there's, there's some great pictures to be taken, just like that. Like, you know, it's and it's of course great to see it swim away too. So, oh, for sure, yeah. I mean, that's yeah, a you know. that's a big fish there, and <laughs> exactly. And, and, and they they uh, travel quite a ways. Don't don't they go all the way down as far as the Gulf of uh, Mexico? Gulf of Mexico is where they spawn. Uh, and there's fish come up here too. They head across to the Mediterranean. So wow. uh, they're 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 world travelers, that's for sure. And plus they're warm blooded fish too, which is mm. which is crazy. Like eh? so they're just uh, they're just a factory of protein is what they are. They just oh, follow sure. the bait fish and they just eat 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 and uh, and they're, they're just phenomenal. And to see one up close. It's one of God's greatest creations, but it just looked like it came out of a GMC <laughs> truck factory or something, just been made by a, yeah. a a sheet metal guy. Like they're just they're just a beautiful, awesome machine. Like eh? so, it's, awesome. Uh, it's a great fishery to be involved in, and I'm, uh, that's fantastic. And I'm glad Canada's took the lead in this and and really look after it. So it's uh, yeah, really, really so good. It, yeah, yeah. So it's on the economy too. So if. Uh, if somebody's interested in finding out more about this, obviously I'm gonna I'm gonna have uh, links and uh, information in the show notes of this episode. But um, is there any info you want to uh, relay, or or do you want me to just link to uh, a certain location for you? Sure. Well, you can uh, definitely look up uh, Northumberland Bluefin Tuna Charters. That's the company that I'm with. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, we sail from the first of August to uh, whenever the season closes. Okay, which can okay. be, and obviously, once you get into October and stuff, you're getting into rougher waters and sure. rougher times. Uh, sure. I mean, the fish are still there, and uh, yeah. Uh, and of course, you just go on the website, and you'll see all mm-hmm. different kinds of links for for the fishing. Like, uh, so, okay, so you got yeah. different packages available. It depends on you know whatever time the the client has available. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. If somebody's just out for a half day, that can be done too, like, eh? so mm-hmm. it's, uh, and usually they're up groups, like, it's, com- it's very comfortable with four people, but uh, there's some people want five and six people, like, sure, eh? so sure. it's, uh, it's comfortable with four people, that's for sure. It's a, awesome. It's a great day. I mean, you know, when you, and the prices are, it's $2,000 a day, mm-hmm. uh, but if you break that between four people, it's only 500 bucks mm-hmm. to catch the fish of your lifetime. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, like you know, as a salmon fisher yourself, that sure. will spend way more than that to try and catch <laughs> fish in a lifetime. Like you know, I mean, so it's That's uh, true. Uh, when you put it into that perspective, it's uh, and plus it's just a great day out as well. Like sure, it's sure. To see to see that kind of stuff, the whales, the dolphins, the oh fish, yeah, tuna fish and birds and everything's out there. Mm. Like it, so it's an awesome day. So, what's the maximum number of people you can have in your party? Uh, well, it, 
some boats are bigger than ours. Our, our boat would be six, and mm-hmm. there's five and four. That's kind of okay. six. Six, I would say, was maximum. Like yeah. you know, so yeah, yeah. So okay. it just gets a tighter squeeze after that, and sure. everybody tries to see fish and sure, you know, sure. And, and you've got six macro rods over at the same time. <laughs> yeah. six rod, it can be messy. Like hey, so. that, that does sound yeah. messy, but yeah, I'm sure if somebody was, you know, if three or four people were cool, just going out, you know, taking pictures yeah. and watching things and having a barbecue. Yeah, that's true too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Some people just want to do that too. And, sure. and of course there's, there's fishing inside for, for people that don't like being really offshore. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Cape George, you can go off Cape George and within five minutes you can be sitting on top of fish like hey, so, awesome. or you can, if you're an explorer and you want to head to PI or you want to head to Cape Breton or the mm-hmm. Ridge, then it's all very accessible and uh, mm. and it's great fun. Awesome, Steve. I uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, tell us more about this tuna fishery. And of course, if anybody who's listening wants to learn more, you can check the show notes for this episode. Um, just uh, just go to maritimeoutdoorsman.com and uh, search up the episode. This will be the first one on tuna. And uh, and Steve Clapperton, of course, host of East Links Fishing with Friends, joining me today. Thanks again, Steve, and uh, tight lines. And I hope to uh, maybe get up there and check out some of these tuna, tuna with you before too long. Exactly, buddy. I'm looking forward to having you. Awesome. All right, man. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks, man. Bye bye. Yeah. All right. Well, there you have it. Thank you, Steve, for taking some time out of your day to fill us in a little bit more about the tuna fishery and by all means if anybody listening has any interest in finding out more information about the tuna fishery or booking a charter of your own um, just check the show notes for this episode which can be found at maritimeoutdoorsman.com slash 012 for episode 12 alternatively you can just go to www.northumberland.com bluefintunacharters.com. That's the charter that Steve works on himself. And uh, yeah, just thanks for joining me for another episode. I hope you have a great day. Tight lines, and we'll talk to you soon.